This is a vector signal generator manufactured by Triarchy Technologies. It's called the VSG6G1. Now there's a few other models that they also make. I bought this from Salig Here is the listing on their uh, on their website. The price the, as of this morning is four hundred and forty one dollars. Now I have no connection with uh, Triarchy Technologies or Salig or for that matter anyone. Uh, right now I'm completely retired. Uh, used to direct a research uh, lab and uh, I just work with this stuff today partly to assist uh, schools and universities and students, uh, double E students and such, with equipment and uh, understanding those. So what I'm trying to do here is to do a little bit of an overview of the uh, of the Triarchy generator. Now I hope to do some additional experiments with this uh, generator. When I bought it, I was a little skeptical because a lot of the USB equipment that's available today, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but some, is a little bit uh, more like a toy than it is uh, a usable instrument. Now, I'm not claiming that this is a high-quality lab instrument rivaling a, a high-end vector signal generator, but it is a very capable instrument. And one of the things that sets it apart is not only its low price, but, but the wide range of signals you can generate with it. Now, a vector signal generator differs from an ordinary signal generator in the ability to generate a wide variety of RF signals that uh, are not just amplitude or, or uh, frequency modulated, but are quadrature modulated. In other words, that's what the vector in the vector signal generator means, is that it has, it contains an internal I and Q, which stands for in-phase, quadrature phase modulator. So, you may not be interested in this if you're, uh, unless you do work in those areas or do experiments in those areas. But one thing, as you'll see in a minute, I'm going to go over the specs of this generator. And just as a general RF generator, this spec, uh, this uh, particular unit, I think, uh, commends itself well to, uh, to use, partly because of its wide frequency range. Now, it comes in this little case that you see here. It comes with a, a small software disk. You can also download the software from the website. It also comes with one attenuator over here, an N adapter that will adapt from SMA to N, and one MMC to SMA cable. The reason that uh, that's important is the outputs, except for the RF for the uh, generator, are on MMC connectors that you can see here. That's the uh, both phases of the I and Q, and then on the end is the clock output and input also. Now, MMC connectors are used in the high frequency, or should, should say, in the gigahertz frequency range. So, let's talk about the specs of the VSG uh, 6G1 first, and you'll see that it goes to a, uh, has a very wide frequency range. Here are the specifications, or I should say, they call them key features, of the uh, signal generator. As you can see, it has a frequency range up to 6.2 gigahertz. So it covers all of the Wi-Fi and ISM frequencies up to and including 3G and 4G frequencies uh, and so on. The output level is up to 10 dBm. 
that's uh, uh, dB milliwatts, uh, and that's certainly sufficient for most experimental and uh, engineering applications, testing things. There might be occasions where you need more power than that, but in those cases I would recommend that you actually go to a full-size uh, generator, uh, partly because the uh, this being USB powered, it, it is uh, limited in how much power output it can put out. Now of course you can add a power amplifier and other things, but we won't get into those uh, those niceties. The frequency can be in CW, all that means is, a continuous wave means a single carrier, in other words a single frequency. That frequency can be swept and it can also be used in frequency hopping, which if you do uh, uh, secure communications or uh, a uh, sum of the uh, computer interconnect over uh, RF use frequency hopping to select the best channel on a dynamic basis. In other words, they as signals interfere, they jump around to find better, better signals. It also has a built-in pulse generator and a built-in arbitrary function generator. The important thing about the arbitrary function generator is it will generate I and Q modulation. In other words, quadrature vector modulation. It will do uh, amplitude modulation, phase modulation, frequency modulation in analog, and also some others. It will do frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, phase shift keying, minimum shift keying, <laughs> GMSK, uh, uh, SFSK, and more. These are digital modes, and we may talk about those in some future video. It'll also do QPSK, which of course stands for quadrature phase shift keying, binary phase shift keying, QAM, which is quadrature amplitude modulation, and so on. CDMA, uh, GSM, uh, these are uh, used in, in cell phones. And it says any kind modulation generated with built-in I and Q uh, engine. <laughs> Once again, this being built uh, offshore, the uh, the one thing that I have found that's a little bit frustrating is the uh, the, the lack of of an English editor. Uh, but you do have to kind of put up with this, and there's a few things if we get into the manual where I'll show you that you do have to interpret a little bit. But if you have a reasonably good education in RF and in vector signals, you should have little or no trouble. If you are doing this as a beginner, that is perhaps someone with a double E degree and a little bit of RF education but have never worked with any of these signals, nor a vector signal generator, I suggest that you uh, at least look at some of the training materials from companies like Agilent uh, and Tektronix who make VSGs quite a bit more expensive because this is certainly not uh, something intended to train you. It's more for someone who already knows what they're doing. It, it says LF output and what they mean there is baseband output from the arbitrary function generator so in addition to the modulated signals you can also uh, generate uh, baseband signals and output those. You can also uh, output pulses and use the pulses to modulate. The, uh, it works on a, a USB connection and as far as I can tell it seems to work well on that connection. Now I've tried out a number of different uh, uh, generation schemes. They have a bunch of them built in and the, the generator appears to perform well across the, uh, the entire range. Now if you're thinking of ordering one of these, let me suggest a few things that you might want to keep in mind at the time you order. One is the attenuator that it comes with is an SMA attenuator, not 
a uh, not an N attenuator. Now there is an N to SMA uh, adapter, so you can put this attenuator on the output of the uh, of this adapter. But remember that your uh, the the signals that are output from this device are on an N connector that you see here. Another thing that I will point out is these MMCX uh, connectors. These are a special, very high uh, frequency connector that are used on cell phones and uh, GPS systems and so on to operate. They, they click in. I'm going to push down. You may be able to hear that click. Uh, and that converts that to, for example, an SMA. However, the, the unit only comes with one of these. So one of the things you might want to do is order some additional cables. Now I bought these at the, from Salig as well. They are uh, MMC to SMA connectors or cables, short ones. And the price was so cheap that I couldn't pass up buying 10 of them. You don't need 10, but I do think you want to probably have four or five of them. I also got these from Mouser Electronics, and there are many sources of supply for these. In addition to these, you probably will want a series of cables like these to connect between instruments like spectrum analyzers that tend to use end connectors and some instruments that tend to use uh, the SMA connector and still others that use BNC connectors. Now this is a an SMA to BNC adapter. You can also get those. So what I would suggest is if you're going to be getting one of these generators that you think about the kinds of cabling that you might need between your instruments and the, uh, the vector signal generator. Because frankly the usefulness of this generator is multiplied many times over if you can use its many outputs and inputs. It has the ability to uh, synchronize off an external clock, so if you have a clock in your lab that provides a 10 megahertz reference, you can use that, like a rubidium frequency standard. However, all of those connections are through these little, uh, some people call them GSM or, or uh, GPS connectors because the antennas on those devices often use these MMCX connector types. So what I'm going to do uh, is, in the next little segment, I'm going to talk about some of the things that this generator does. But at this point, I'm going to conclude this overview. And perhaps in uh, part two, I will do a demonstration of this unit generating a vector signal.